Hey guys, today I got a little different type of video for you. I'm going to start and run this Willis Co. D6 steam engine. This smokestack is more or less for looks. And every time I run it, it always falls off because it just sticks on there. If I ever set it up permanently, like on a display board or something, I'd probably solder this on there. And that'd look good staying if it stood on there. And it'd probably be best to anchor it to something because it shakes a lot. It's got four holes there. You can mount it to a piece of wood or something, make like a display for it. They also sell like a workshop to simulate how a steam engine used to be used. And of course, it's got a whistle on it. The whistle don't work the greatest. It uh, sounds about like a tea kettle. It's about the way it sounds. I'll, use, I'll show you on the video here. I don't like to use the whistle a whole lot because it uses up a lot of steam. And if you get the engine running, it'll uh, slow it down as you'll see here in a little bit. And when you're running, you don't want the water level to drop below the glass one here. As you can see, I got a little bit in there. I've run it earlier. It's been a few hours since I run it. As you can see, it's all still cold. Everything's cold on it. I just unscrew the safety valve. Also, before you run it, make sure this is working right. You see it's spring loaded and it pulls up. No way if it builds up too much pressure, it comes up here and lets the pressure out. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with water. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with water here. I'm just using the bottled water. Seems to work pretty good. I don't like to put any more water than that in there. If you put more than that in there, you get water in the lines, and it don't want to work right. So now we're going to go ahead and put the safety valve back in it. I'm going to get it fairly tight. Just tighten it by hand, about like that. Same for the whistle. Always make sure it's tight. This one tends to leak here. You'll probably see some bubbling here. Like it needs a new uh, seal on here. And for all the people that subscribe to me from small engines, this is a piston out of 11 horse Briggs. Kind of gives you an idea of how big it is. You can see my hand here. It's uh, pretty small. There's the piston. You can see how, see how much of a difference it is there. Now it comes with this special oil for steam engines. It's pretty thick oil. Uh, you just put it, just put some oil all over the piston here. About like that. And you want to get a little bit here. Get a little dab all you need. I'm going to put this in there. Wiggle around a little bit, make sure the oil gets in there. And put it on here, the crankshaft. Make sure everything's spinning free. Probably don't hurt to put a drop of oil back here on each uh, bearing. What I do is just put a little drop here and let it run down in there. Kind of hard to tell. I put a oil on it earlier anyway. If you want to oil it every time you use it. This is the burner. You're supposed to burn these tablets in here. That's what they recommend. And that's why I'm recommending to you to use. But if you look, I got Sterno inside of it, cooking fuel. I'm going to put some more in here. It works just as good, if not better, than these. This is all I got, so I thought I'd try that fuel and see how it works. Now I'm going to go ahead and load that up. And all I do, I just take a screwdriver here and kind of load it up. kind of hard to show you here without blocking the camera. Load it up until it's uh, pretty much full. I do notice this uh, fuel here don't burn quite as long as the uh, tablets that's designed for it. So you usually have to stop in the middle of running to uh, put a little more fuel in it. It seems to work pretty good. I would recommend using what they recommend because if you have a new one, this might void the warranty or something with it. So I'm not recommending you to use this type of fuel. And we'll get ready to light it here. The match started. I'll tell you one thing, this fuel here does light better than them other tablets. That's all you gotta do to get it lit. And we'll put it in here. Let me turn this off. You can see the flame there a little better. It's a blue flame. Burns pretty clean. Let's put it underneath there. And you're gonna sit back and wait a little while for it to warm up. Now a few things to keep in mind when you got it running, this all this boiler is gonna be hot and it's already starting to get warm. And all this down here is going to be hot. The pipe is, and when you got it running, your cylinder over here is going to get pretty hot too. So uh, you got to be careful with it. 
And also, it's probably not best to run something like this on a wooden surface like my workbench here. It's, I'm just going to be running for a brief amount of time. I don't recommend doing that. A metal table or a concrete porch or something like that would be the best. Now we're just going to sit back and wait for it to start boiling here. I let the pressure build up. I'm not going to record it because it usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get warmed up. It depends on how much water you have in it. And another thing, anytime you run something like this, you always want to stay with it. You don't want to leave the room or something to wait for it to come up to a boil. You just you better sit beside it in case something goes wrong. And if something does ha happen, you have to go answer the phone or something. Just pull out your fuel and take it outside or pour some water on it or something. After a couple minutes, you can see it's trying to start building a little bit of pressure. Not enough to run yet. It usually takes about 5 to 10 minutes to come up to a boil on it. Just depends on how much water you got in it. And if you listen, you can hear the water starting to boil a little bit. You start to see the water boiling there a little bit. And it's starting to build a little steam up. I'm doing that to get some water out of the lines. You can see the water coming out. You do that, be sure not to get burnt because that steam can burn you coming out of there. It's almost there. And you can see the water boiling real good now. Probably about ready to start running here in just a few seconds. And let's see what's about ready to go. not up to full pressure yet, it usually runs a little faster than that. You look here, you see the leak I was talking about here around the whistle. It's not a big leak, but I am losing a little bit of pressure from there. I'm going to try to get another washer there to fix that. We should be up to pressure now. There we go. That's why you got to hold it once you walk all over the place. I recommend anchoring it like I said earlier. Hear how much the ball goes down? We lost a lot of pressure when we do that. I'm low on pressure from running that whistle now. I'm going to open the whistle up a little bit here to lose some pressure and we'll see how slow we can get the engine to run. about it right there. Now on some of the different models that you can get, they actually have a valve here that you can adjust the speed of it, like a throttle almost. I stopped it here for a second, we're gonna let the pressure build up a little bit. And like I said earlier, if your pressure builds up too much, that rear safety valve right there will open up. Sometimes this does get warm here if you have to hold it like this. Trying to simulate a load on it. And this here's a pulley you can run stuff off of it. You can put your little generator back here 
run a light, a little light bulb or something, like a flashlight bulb. Let the pressure build up a little bit. It's actually not that noisy, you're just hearing a lot of vibration off it, taking on the workbench there. And if you want to stop the engine run, you either got to let some pressure off the valve here, or you can take your thumb here and slow it down like that, take your finger there. And it's not a dual acting cylinder, it's a wobbler steam engine. And you can see here, you can see where the you hear it starting to see where it engages right there. So if it was a dual acting, it would pull it over here like this and it could it would start on its own. You get right there and it starts wanting to go. And like I said, keep an eye on your water level. Don't let it drop below the glass. I like to run it until about a quarter way out, and that's usually when I shut it off. And I don't recommend trying to put more water in it when it's hot. You let it cool down, then you can open it. Because you, you, it's very easy to get burned one of these. That's about a normal operating speed there. It usually runs real fast there at first. And the book says don't run it any longer than 10 minutes without re and everything. If you have to re-oil, you're going to have steam coming out of here, so always release the pressure first before you do that. It can still run for a while longer, it's got enough water left in there, but I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. fires out now put it out well guys well thank you for watching i hope you liked this video and we'll catch you all in the next video maybe later on i'll make a generator or something for this and we'll try it out under load see what it's going to do well thanks for watching guys